We're going to start the meeting. Okay. We'll call the meeting to order at 6 o'clock. First on the agenda is, is there any changes or additions? Yes, there are. Um, we have um, add a road naming and add a discussion and actions on uh, COVID-19 response. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Next, the board reorganization. The first is to nominate chair and vice chair. Turn, turn it over to you. Yes. Um, is there any nominations? Nominate Bob Dean for chair. Any second? Second. Okay. Any other nominations? All in favor say Bob. Bob. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Bob's got it. Turn the meeting back over, Bob. Thank you, Brian. <clears throat> Next, uh, Vice Chair. And I'll have Brian for Vice Chair. Do I have a second? Okay. Is there any further discu discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Many opposed? Thank you. So fast. <laughs> Next. Department li head liaisons. So the way the way it has been for the current year is I'm the liaison for the police department. Brian is the liaison to the fire department. Uh, Eric is liaison to the highway department. Judy has been a liaison to uh, rescue, and the general government was Chris Town. Uh, how do you want to do this? Do you want to do them all? Or, and I guess, question to you, Gary, are you interested in doing uh, general government? That's the only one left. I guess I don't have much. <laughs> right. Well, but, uh, I guess yeah, first, I don't know what it involves. But, uh, is everybody <laughs> happy doing what they're doing, or do you want to change up? You're happy? All, yeah. Judy. You're happy with me. What Judy, what's your matter? thought? I'm happy. Okay. We can, we can give you a quick, therefore. Yeah. <laughs> Give him a once over yeah, on. We'll give him the once over at some point in time. Uh, That's actually good because it gets you really involved and, you know, get your hands on right off the bat. Good. Perfect. So, do we want to uh, appoint all of those? Uh, Brian for fire, myself for police, Eric for highway, Judy for rescue, and Gary for general government? So moved. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Next, to set the meeting schedule. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, the current meeting schedule is the first and third Mondays of each month. Um, previously, it had been every other Monday, um, but it's really up to the board with meeting time starting at 6 p.m. in the community meeting room here in the building, of course. So that's, once again, right now it's the first and third, and I did have a discussion. Um, yeah, that works works really well for me. I'm on another board, which meets the second. Monday, second, fourth, so. yeah. How does that sound, Judy? That sounds excellent. Thank you. Yeah, but you're I'm going to read Right? Yeah. So we don't need a motion for it. We can just say that's how we're going to do it. You should make a motion. Yeah. Yes. So Brian. I'll make a motion. We approve that. So second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Next, approve the minutes of February 18th, 2020. Second. Is there any further discussion? I would just like to add that uh, I've brought up about join, rejoining LTPC. I just what would like that reflected in the minutes. Yes. That sounds good. You have the Erica. Is that under subword is that under concerns? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? Well, I, I wasn't there then, but I was reading through the minutes and uh, under Copley Trust, item number two. I think the date might be wrong oh, on yes, Gloria Wing approved minutes. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 
should be 2019 as opposed to 2020. Yeah. All right, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? So pass. Next, community concerns. Do we have any community concerns tonight? Andy. Uh, All right. Uh, yeah, I think this is probably the place where this would fit in best. I just wanted to come here tonight. Uh, and my name is Andy Lundin. I'm the director of finance from the uh, school district, Memorial South Unified Union. Of course, our board meeting is happening right now. And um, as you can imagine, our number one topic is the COVID-19 response. So I wanted to just share with the select board and, and the public that we're um, fully engaged, as you can imagine, in the response. And that the administration, which includes all the principals and the central office staff, and uh, administrative support, we're responding to the governor's uh, requirements and the state's requirements to uh, dismiss schools on Wednesday. And we're open tomorrow. And then we're going to the dismissal stage, which is really where the um, students will not report to school, but staff will. And so I wanted to let you know that we're uh, working hard around the clock to come up with the best responses to continue education. It's going to be a maintenance of education to provide food through our food service program. And we're working on the details of how to best make that happen and to continue to support needs for special needs students and, and those that need additional needs other than our um, general student population. So I wanted to let you know that we're fully engaged with that, as you can imagine. And if anyone had questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But right now, we're we're working on a lot of different things. That's great. Thanks for letting us know. You're welcome, and we'd be happy to to uh, collaborate with the select board in any way that you might see uh, appropriate. Of course, we're working on our own responses, so we've all got to address this as a as a community. So <clears throat> I just wanted to share that with you tonight and and let you know that we're hard at work. Yeah, I think that's good. I mean, I have your email, but it'd be good to have Dan. Yeah. Oh, Dan and I have each other's okay. information. Because uh, yeah. it'd be nice to keep everybody in the same same loop. There's a lot of communications forward. coming out daily, so uh, uh, we're keeping everyone informed as best we can. Great. Thanks for coming thank tonight, Andy. Yeah, thank Thanks. you. Dave, go ahead. Hi, for the record, Dave Gaparoni. I just wanted to uh, stop in just to share with you uh, and see if I could be helpful on the, on the coronavirus situation. Uh, and I had a great conversation uh, briefly with Dan this morning. I've had a number of people over the weekend contact me asking how they could be helpful, um, either running errands for people who uh, can't get out or don't want to get out, who need uh, food items or drugstore or pharmacy, those kinds of uh, situations. And uh, with Dan's guidance, it was a good reminder that trying to work and I've communicated with what we call 211, kind of like 911, but 411, this is 211, and it's Vermont's information and referral service. What I'm doing is channeling the names of the people who share with me that they would like to be helpful. And I'm giving it to 211 so that when someone should call from our community, they have a list. And um, it gets a little more complicated than that. Confidentiality and um, uh, volunteer background checks, et cetera. Sometimes we let uh, things get in the way of common sense, but it's a complicated world, isn't it? So um, there's that going on. There's also with the uh, Senior Center, um, uh, I'm part of a group that's doing uh, well check phone calls on people who don't get out. Uh, the, the meals program is uh, shifting instead of five days a week of home delivered meals to two days a week, and frozen temporarily at least, frozen meals. But there are a number of people who uh, are short on cash and need help, so we're coordinating with the food shelf, other different programs, and we're also doing check-ins on them just to see how they are. Today, a group of the uh, 
so various social service agencies who've been working quite hard on this uh, convened a meeting and they're trying to sort out who does what. Everything from uh, where the homeless can be helped, particularly if they're not feeling well, um, having the, all the social separation and those kinds of things. Um, Capstone Community Actions that they're working to try to play a lead role on coordinating the uh, assistance, the various um, assistance that folks need. It gets, um, it gets involved. My, my friend Shaq called me and he may want to jump in here too. And I know there's so many people who want to be helpful, which is really great. And it's just channeling that. But I think with the 211 assistance, it goes, we don't have to recreate the wheel or set up a new uh, organization or new system, but trying to use the systems we have, though they could get taxed pretty, pretty easily. So I just wanted to share that. And if, if folks needed anything, if uh, Dan knows how to reach me, any kind of liaison with um, state government, should it emerge in some way, give me a call. Yeah, I think, you know, Sarah and I have been talking back and forth on a lot of different things that may need the legislative help, and I don't know how that's going to work. You know, um, you know, I'll give an example. If, if uh, right now the IRS and both the state are talking about postponing the collection of income taxes, you know, but at the property tax level, we don't necessarily have the authority to do that at the, the local level. And, you know, it's in, and I know the state's legislature is out. And it, there's some things that, that we just don't have control over um, that may need to take a quick look. Um, and we've, we found a couple of them today. And we'll use the, the example we're going to talk about later, dog licenses. Right now, vets' offices are, are closing and people are trying to get their rabies shots. The statute says that Sarah is supposed to collect a penalty after 1 April. doesn't make a lot of sense, and it all stays locally. I think we have a fix for it, but I think, you know, there's some things out there that I would ask the legislature to look down into the local level, where if they're trying to give people relief on something, look at what we can do for the, those local things, too. And, you know, I know VLCT is out there working on that, most likely, but yes. just it's, it's things like that. And there's a lot going on around us. And um, it's, it's those things that we're seeing at our level that, hey, you know, if this is going to happen, you know, if there's things that are going to happen like that. We've had a lot of inquiries already, too, and I think it's just now evolving from small businesses. Um, and I don't think there's anything at the local level, but we can certainly help push that out to some of the local businesses around here. Just what we're seeing already at our level. That's absolutely. I guess I would ask uh, Sarah, if something comes up, to let me know. We passed an, uh, an emergency bill of 37 sections in the House to the Senate, for instance, um, gives a six-month reprieve on vehicle inspections, um, et cetera. Unemplo unemployment, where the... Uh, employers' unemployment rate would not be adversely impacted because of forced layoffs. People seeking an unemployment wouldn't have to do the required job search, trying to keep the social contact down. Um, but there's surely many things, because we did this in a pretty short period, it's in the Senate, which is a good thing. So anything from dog licenses or anything else, let me know and I'll submit it to them. Because I'm sure we couldn't, there's no way to catch everything. This will probably evolve. To right, and it will. Those but just, are great ideas. Yeah, yeah just, there's the, the village meetings coming up. And typically, sadly, there's not usually a, a lot of people that come, but there are about 1,500 people on the checklist. If they all decided to come, and we're way above the, the guidelines for how many people should be together. And it's in the charter, it has to be that day. We have no flexibility of changing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's complicated. Yeah, and I know I was watching one of the news agencies, I can't remember which one, but uh, the vice president was on there talking about, um, you know, having a financial relief for the folks that are going to have lost income during this time. It's, you know, it's very early and it's not organized yet, but it sounds like there is intent to have some sort of, that's going to be a big, big check to write, but. Yes. You know. Yeah, I hope it's a federal check and not a state check. You right. Know, That's great help to us too. We all we pay them all, but spread right. out more. Right. And like taxes, even if we want to do something, it's the voters just voted. There was a discussion, but they 
didn't vote to change. Statutorily, I have to collect delinquent tax. Like, I can't change that date as much as I want to. How do we do that, Dave? How, how does that, can it be expedited somehow to things like the dog licenses and, and um, property taxes, you know? If we... I, I think what, I think there's the spirit and intent to expedite whatever can be expedited. Right. Then some things you get into town charters. Gary knows you, those don't get expedited. <clears throat> yeah. But not everything goes that route too though. So I think make a list and send it to me as, and, and accumulate as you go and we'll ask and submit them. Yeah. And I'm sure the, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns yeah. is gonna be helpful in this regard too. Yeah. I, and, and you know, we had a great conversation about two one one today, and I'm, I'm glad you called and you can understand why I'm sending you there. And it's also I, I know volunteers, and unfortunately in, in times like this, there's still people out there that will try to take advantage of people. So having volunteers vetted, you know, protects everybody. So and in, in Mount in Emergency Management will set up that network of volunteers. They'll vet them. They'll take care of that stuff. But it's, it's that one phone number that everybody can call. We're going to work on putting that out there and that information out there so that everybody can go to <coughs> one phone number rather than, well, who do I call for this and who do I call for that? So, Absolutely. It's a so big help. help. Shop, do you have any yeah. comments? Dan, I wanted to ask a question. I know a lot of names. Yeah. People volunteer on the front porch forum. So are those people being um, kind of advised to contact um, the 211 number to volunteer there? I don't think we've done that yet, but I, I think from what I, I said, Dave's saying that he's done it, but I know it's, it's a lot of people sometimes that know people, which I think is the other thing. It's kind of neighbors helping neighbors on front porch forum right now, which is another great thing, checking on people. Um, but uh -huh. I think Dave is already contacting them to send them to, to 9, or 211. Okay, good. And I had taken the liberty of contacting the school board chair about what the school was doing, <coughs> and that's one of the reasons Andy's there. I thought you might. I know you know him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Chap, you want to say I, I something? Just, I think in a time like this, I mean, we can't underestimate the fact that you, this, the town offices are going to be one of the places that people focus their energy. They're going to want answers. <coughs> and so, 211 is fine, but it's also remote and it could clearly be overwhelmed quickly. So I would just, there are going to be a lot of people who are working remotely. We've already uh, gone completely remote uh, at our office. And I think there's going to be an untapped uh, pool of resources. So um, we're all going to have to pitch in. And I just would encourage the town to be another, not duplicative, but it be another layer because um, that people are going to be looking for local reassurance, and this is the opportunity to 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 be the people who do that, you know. So, um, and I, you know, welcome any if if any help is needed. Um, I there I among many other people are more than willing to do it. And you know, you want to say something? Uh, hey, Eli, on uh, behalf of the National Honor Society of People's Academy, speaking of untapped uh, resources, uh, any volunteering uh, stuff that ends up getting organized, just know that you have the resource of the National Honor Society. You can use me as a liaison for that, or you can contact our supervisor, Moira Donovan, up there. Uh, but yeah, just putting that out there, you have our backing on any sort of volunteer stuff you guys need. That's great. Thank you. Is there anything else? Any other community concerns? All right, hearing none, going to liquor control. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're in liquor control. Sarah. So you have the list that um, in your packet. Yes. Uh, we also need to add 1013 LLC, which is moved place that oh. I just got their application made this afternoon for um, first and third, and an outside consumption. Okay. Richard, is there any issues with any of these? No concerns. You looked at them? Yes. Do I hear a motion regarding them? I may want to approve all of those. Uh, second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
So passed. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. New business. Discuss the ATVs on the Silver Ridge Road. That must be you, Ellen and Shannon. That is me. Uh, Shannon Frederick, Green Mountain ATV Riders. Uh, we're just looking to amend the curfew on Silver Ridge Road. Right now, at this time, it's eight to six, and we're looking to pick up Sunset as one of our one of our entry points. We have. Where we have picked up Sunset as one of our entry points, and we're looking to extend that from to eight to eight, if possible. Uh, six o'clock return time sometimes with conflict on people out riding and we're just looking to make it easier for them to travel that highway and get back to their our, uh, trail in. They park right there at the sunset? They will be parking right at sunset, yes. Yeah. Uh, I know we had some concerns with one with one person on that street last year and I don't want to conflict with them. I didn't know if we wanted to see how that went. Talk yeah, I, I was thinking about that too. I remember talking to you about that in uh, the person that came in never came back in to, to our knowledge. Send out letters again to, to all the, the, the landowners out there to let them know we we're having this meeting again tonight. Yeah, and the idea was to let us know. We said if there's a problem of any kind, come in, let us know. We'll try to work it out. Yeah. And we haven't heard anything to my knowledge. I don't think the chiefs heard anything here. We haven't given any calls. You haven't? No. I don't believe our travel on that road is very extensive anyway. Right. Uh, people heading for gas. It's going to pick up some, obviously, if it's a trailhead there, but I don't expect it to be a great amount. But Do you have any idea of the numbers? That... I don't. I don't. I mean, we've ridden that several times, and we've used that as a... To get gas, to go to the store. To get gas and stuff, you know. Putting a number on it would be difficult. I wouldn't say on a weekend it would be 15. We did have a ATV ride. Like, yeah, we had September, October, yeah. and we had how many people? 45, 40 or 45 machines that would have gone there. That was one of our pickup points for our tickets. Yeah. So, that so would have they didn't complain about that day? I was going to say, that would have been a pretty big flag. <laughs> that was all in one day, so, so if we hadn't had any concerns up to them, I would have thought that would have been the day, if anything, travel volume wise. Yeah. So that's my request is there. Add two hours to our first time at the end of the day. Yeah. Any thoughts on the board? Gary, any input? Eric? I, I think great. I'm very fortunate to live in the rural part of Vermont where we can have the ATVs having access like that. I want to for our businesses. Uh, as far as I know, there haven't been any mishaps on, on our part of the roadway. It's a short stretch, but nonetheless, it's a straightaway and uh, you're going to have those snowmobiling. We yeah. have off-trail riders, we have people on trails that aren't supposed to be there. Uh, you know, you're always going to have a small percentage that will raise somebody's ire. But uh, I think we're very fortunate to be able to have them come in the community and uh, hopefully the network and acceptance of our communities will grow. Mm -hmm. The board's trying on a trial basis in the village to get access to the restaurants down there. I think that's great. Island Pond economy. Depends on how the agencies yeah. in the summer and summer in the summer. And uh, I think it's just another piece of, uh, of Vermont that uh, should grow and continue to grow. Well, it's nice that we, you know, we gave this a shot and, and the person to complain did, really didn't come back with anything. I was, I was going to seek her out actually. And, and stop and see her. I may do that, uh, but I've heard nothing. That, and we encourage her to come back if there was any problem. Good, good. You know, what do you say, Brian? Well, I agree. I think it's a great thing to you know, we, we to do continue. A lot of towns and go to a lot of select board meetings, and you know, really town to town. You know, High Park opened up a ton last year for us. Yeah. And as far as I know, they had one person call on some signage, and that was the only complaint they'd had. And that opened up Center Road, which. I thought in my own mind that was going to be an issue spot being so long, so straight, and nobody had any concerns. So I think all in all, it's going going well. The only the complaint they had was they couldn't read our signs. Was a, a, they were in the vehicle thinking that they were supposed to read our signs. Our uh, <laughs> now, do you guys share some of the same trails as fast? No. You don't? Uh, well, 
we might run into some spots where they do class four roads are open to eight class four right. yeah. like yeah. yeah. there's a few up, there's a few up in Island Pond too that area yeah. Yeah. and some other towns that well, share a little bit but the timber roads the same yeah. procedures as Bass does we go see a landowner we get landowner permission slips you know, everybody's, they're not just riding across people's property. No. Right. Do you guys have a system set up for trail maintenance? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, with VASA itself as an organization, we have a pretty large equipment set up in order to take care of what needs to be done right off and what needs to be done as a maintenance schedule set up. You know, and plus our clubs do the same thing as for general maintenance, general cleanup, keeping keeping track of concerns. But yeah. you know, generally, it's it, Goes fairly smoothly for the most part. When are your club meetings? Do you have? At, at Bass are our hours. Do you have set times? Uh, we have hours, which is generally tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, we've canceled that one due to world events. So right. we're going to postpone that a month. But generally, right now, we haven't re voted on it, but it's going to be the second Tuesday of every month. So that's the third Tuesday. Third Tuesday. Third, two, third right. Tuesday of the month. The FW is 6 p.m. Okay, and you have a website too? Uh, yes. Facebook, Facebook. Well, we have Facebook. Facebook, okay. Yeah. I, I knew that, but I'm just trying to establish that for everybody here yeah. that might try to get a hold our of you. Contact or info, everything on Facebook has our, our contact info, and I'm welcome phone calls whenever. Yeah. We're concerned. more than excited if you guys want to talk about opening up more roads, but right now we're <laughs> right. happy with the Silver Ridge Road, or Silver, yeah, Silver Ridge yeah. Road. It's a good trial. And, and that's my other my other question is if the town has ever thought about adopting an ordinance. Not that you need it because you don't have any town roads at this point, point in time, but it does make it, I think, easier for an organization as a VASA to know what towns stand in what position and where they are, what people are talking about towns. Mm -hmm. It gives a more, a, an easier reference point when you're looking at town ordinances to look at the town more so look for ordinances and know what you've got. Yeah. And also, that it's easier for law enforcement as well. What's that? Yeah, three it's quarters easier for law enforcement as well for with yeah. an ordinance in place. No, it's it's a three quarters of a mile because it's, you have given us permission, is covered by VASA liability. So if anything happens, they cover or we cover. Yeah. Same with landowners, you know, we're always looking for landowners and that's our biggest selling, our only selling point right. as for liability issues on travel on private properties. So yeah. it's always working for us. I know there's model ordinances at VLCT for us. I could find one and look, look, look at it, see what yeah. you guys want to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Judy, what are your thoughts about it? I'm in favor of it because the one thing I know is that we can always revisit it if there is a problem. Right. Well, I think we can move forward on it. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding this? I make a motion that we approve the uh, extension of the curfew to 8 p.m. So 8 to 8. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. I may come to one of those meetings. I got, got to get my side by side out. Yeah. 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 All right. Next, discuss and approve summer rec recreation policies. Carrie, this is the one you've worked on more than me. Yeah. Um, so there's two different policies. Um, I'm kind of coming to you probably more as the treasurer as I am from the parks and rec. Um, hat just that um, one is the com committee member discount policy, and it's what they've been doing for a long time in REC. It's just been verbal, and I asked them to write something in writing so that I I had it clear what discounts that they um, were receiving as the town treasurer. Now that I'm processing all the payments through the REC computer. Right. Um, before they were doing a lot of their bookkeeping on their end and their track and then they would bring us the information now we're managing a lot more in-house than before so i asked for some written policies yeah. um, and then the second one is a program cancellation and refund policy which is not if we decide necessarily to cancel um, the program um, 
I mean, I guess it is a little bit, but the, also this, now that we're running everything through this rec process, it's, it's a big process when people make, want to cancel um, and, uh, or make changes or there, it has to go through, Christy has to approve it and then I have to do all the data entry to make the changes and then Paula has to cut a check, it has to run through the warrants, then it has to come back to me to sign the check to mail out. So there's a lot of paper um, handling. So this actually is a model um, cancellation and refund policy that we got from other, it's a pretty standard policy that most of the other towns are mm -hmm. doing, um, asking for a $10 um, process fee that will help offset the work of canceling. I just want to say something on the, the, the first policy, the committee member discount. These people do this for free, and it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of responsibility. I mean, if, if you look at what they have to set up to get everything organized and keep this summer program gone, you know, Christy in particular puts a lot of time into it, not just during the summer, the year round. So it, it's really a good deal for the town that we have a volunteer that does this and a committee that helps organize. And it's, it's really worked well. We've found in the past years that, you know, people will cycle in and cycle through because their kids are in it. But it, it's it's well worth it because we're not paying somebody to do it. Yeah, so most, most, most camps have, yeah. programs have full I mean, staff. Yeah, they're, they're setting up trainings, you know, for water safety, <laughs> lifeguards, making sure everybody you know, works with Bill and get the CPR training done. So, and, and hires people and gets everything organized. It's it's a lot of work for those volunteers to do that. So it's a really good deal for the town. Now, do you need a motion to do them separately or together? Or? I would say separately, please. Okay. So I make a motion. We have passed the first part, the 100% uh, discount and the 50%. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Now the second part. I'll make a motion we pass the second cancellation <coughs> and refund policy. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thanks, Sarah. Next, discuss Conservation Commission projects. Ron, is that you? I'm the chair. <laughs> How are you tonight? I'm feeling good, thank you. I'm glad. Congratulations to the uh, new elected director and everyone else who uh, got, the, got their old job back. <laughs> um, I'm, first thing I'm looking for is uh, the uh, approval to spend about $3,000, and I'm going to go through the categories and do it be one lump sum approval. Um, <clears throat> looking at the second uh, article that was on the morning, I had a thought that maybe it might be nice to donate a little bit of money towards the construction of a rail trail. So I, <clears throat> I've got to run this by my board, but I'm, I'm thinking about $1,000 towards that. The second expenditure, <clears throat> uh, Town of Cambridge approved uh, $20,000 towards a uh, PA Cruise Nature Preserve. We'd like to help them down there with $1,000. And uh, in April, we're having an educational expense. We're going to have, I think it's Susan Morse, who's going to talk about cougars. And in May, we're going to uh, attend a uh, Memorial County Conservation District thing that's going to, event that's going to be happening. So I, I don't look at we're spending over 3000 So that's what I'm looking for <clears throat> approval tonight for that part. Could I make a comment on the, the rail trail? Um, and I think right now there's a, a bill, chat, maybe you're following this too. In the legislature now where the state would fund you know, the whole, the entire state share. So, you know, I don't know that there's going to be a necessity for donations yet. 
I, I know. I don't know if you're still following any of that the legislature or not. So I know that's that's the proposal in the governor's budget. Um, but so so far, you know, it looks like the state's going to pick up that whole matching percentage on the rail trail. I'd just cool. say that um, there will still be needs for uh, maintenance costs. Yep. Uh, so it's it's for the Fine. construction. <laughs> Yeah, I know uh, I'm on the Governor's Mobile Council as well, and uh, I know VAST is still up to maintaining the trail after it is built. That's the money, like Shaft said, is strictly for the construction mm -hmm. to finish the whole 93 mile section, but it doesn't include maintenance. It's, okay. So. Is there a budget set up for maintenance on that? Uh, VAST is. Does it basically? It's all on, part of their budget. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. on their on an as needed basis, and they're fortunate enough to have, like Morrisville, I think Sunny Demers mows everything in uh, Morrisville stretch, and then I don't know. I think somebody does in Hyde Park, and then they've got some people in uh, Cambridge I met them last fall that they mow and maintain, you know, a free gratis stuff, and uh, so yeah, they've got a lot of volunteers, but they're still. Always that time when you need to, right. you need to hire somebody to bring in a little material or something. Fix a culvert or whatever. Yeah, had a washout or two here and there. And so. Okay. It's a great, uh, <coughs> great thing, that rail trail. Uh, it is. I've yes. always told everybody I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet a week's pay that it would melt anything when they built it. Boy, and the thing is unbelievable. Yep. It's a tremendous amount of use. It does. Yep. In good use, too. Yeah. Well, given, given what um, Gary just said, then would the money go directly to that, or is that something that the Conservation Commission would hold back and wait until maintenance is needed? Or it's not by our decision? I look at the rail trail as a good investment for uh, recreationists, and being in the conservation scope of uh, our business is that I thought this might be a, something that might be a, a, highlight, a, a highlight for others to look at for donating money towards the completion of this rail trail. Now, we don't donate a thousand, that's okay, but I need the other two. The other <laughs> Well, I'm in favor of donating some, and we could say it's going to go toward trail maintenance or something like that. Well, that's what I want to the same thing Judy just asked, and I don't think you answered the question, but I'm all for donating $1,000. That's not the issue, but if they've already got the money to, to do that, to put that toward a good use, which would be maintaining the trails afterwards. That's my thought. This, this hasn't been approved yet by my people. Right. Right. I'm just looking to see what... Um, yeah, well, we're in favor of maybe you should bring that part of it by your board first, and then you can come back with that part, but we can do the other part. Well, about that part, let's yeah. go to helping Cambridge with their conservation sure. thing, and then the other events while looking at 2000. Yeah. How does that sound? Yeah, I would encourage you to not donate money to the construction fund. Right. To the maintenance of the trail, I would ask you to contact Cindy at the VAS office because if we're looking, you're looking at donating a thousand dollars to a certain part of the rail trail, the thousand dollars could get spent in Swamp. So if you want it to be in the Morrisville district, then they may look at signage, they could look at beautification projects, something along that line. Could be many different things, but if you're looking to have a spot that your $1,000 from our Conservation Commission was spent on, you could say tangibly that that is what we donated. And I would talk directly with Cindy uh, and work on a project. And I had no problem authorizing them for a for dollar amount to work with on something like that. But I, I really don't want to see it on the construction because that's all that's right. going to be covered. The question there was whether or not they're going to do it five years or 15 years. So I think they've done a five year track. Yeah. And you also, you also have to realize that uh, Vast, Vast only uses the trail about 25% of the time. Most of the use right. is in the summertime for bicycles and walkers and things yeah. like that. So yeah. Vast maintains it for 
everybody else to use, basically. Yeah. So, but yeah, the, I, uh, the last big storm we had did do some damage locally. It did. Yeah. It did. Fortunately for everybody, FEMA is, is uh, looking at both projects and will we'll reimburse a lot, 70%. Yeah. So are you saying you'd like to amend it to be the 3,000? I don't mind if we give Ron the authority to do that. I, I, again, I would go in the stipulation of yeah. working directly to send it back. Yeah, I, I agree. agree. Not have the phone I agree. Trying to give her a thousand right. <laughs> right. right. But, I, I would come back to the board before that issue. Okay. Right now we're down to just the $2,000 for uh, a conservation project in Cambridge and some events that we're having this, this summer here in town. So, from my standpoint, what I would like to see rather than a motion from us tonight is for us to give a head nod if we're in agreement to rock him back to his board with these things for approval from the board. Then, once he gets them, he can come back here and at that time we'd approve the money. Does that sound feasible? Yeah. I, I mean, I, those, yeah. those, those issues you brought up, I have no issue with any of them. So, yeah. Yeah. I, would, I would say get it through your board first and then come back and then we get approval. What do you think, Judy? Um, I'm, not, I'm sort of unclear about the discussion. Could you could you reframe it for me, Bob? Well, the idea is just to give uh, Ron the head nod that we're okay with this stuff. He's going to go back to the Conservation Commission and you know put it by them, and then he'll come back to us for the actual uh, approving it. Sounds good. Thank is that you. okay? Is that okay, Brian? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Ron. Got one other thing. Yep. Um, Morristow Water and Light, or the village of Morristow, has a uh, large parcel of land now on Route 15 that uh, it's always been rumored that they're trying to relieve themselves of land. Um, I'm, being, I'm a member of the Stowe Land Trust, so I have communicated with them about the possibility of them being involved in acquiring the development rights of the so-called Bunk Ugby Spring. The what I got back from the director of Stowe Land Trust is that, first of all, the, they would work with the waterlight people or the village of Morrisville on that. But secondly, they want to know if the town would accept the transfer of the land so it could be a town force. I look at this as a good project because it'll keep it in public use. Um, it's overlaid by Act 250 as a large area of deer wintering yard, plus it would preserve the aquifer that is there that might be needed for public use. So basically, the question tonight is, from the select board, would you accept that if it is going down near the end of the red tape, and this ain't gonna happen tomorrow, uh, would you accept that transfer of the land so it would become town for Where is it geographically, Ron? What's that? Where is it? I know it's on Route 15, but... Near the stack bar. Right behind that's the what I thought. The left, up uh, the stack bar. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what the big map looks like. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that used to be more so as water, right? A long time ago. Right. Yeah. 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 It's still, I think that line is still... Yeah. Active. Still active. Oh, really? I knew it was still there, though. Well, I'm in the process of doing deep research, and I'll tell you, it's a nightmare. You have to go to Hyde Park. That's what I was going to say. When Mac was doing their historical signs, they got stuck on some there for the snack bar. I had to go to Hyde Park because you might have to go to Hyde Park. There's like oh, records. The records. Yeah, records from the 1800s in Hyde Park for us, and we have some of Hyde Park. Parks, it's really weird. And it's all around the spring. Yeah. Get that straightened out, Sarah, will you? I know. <laughs> Luckily they didn't charge me for it. Well, it could be part of it. Our records in their records. 
Is there a reason maybe part of it might be in Hyde Park? I think there was land swaps. Land. Oh, right. That's what I meant. Because Leo, yeah. Leo well, lives up there. There's in Hyde Park, right? That I was doing it for Leo. Before it was the Morristown Forest, it was an aqueduct company, and it was quick claim to the Morris village of Morristown. So I'm down that far, but it was in the 1820s. Yeah. I mean, 1920s, 1920s. Right. Uh, I, I was back in the 18s. So you're looking for whether or not we might be willing to accept it? Would the town accept it? Yeah. If it is approved by Waterlight to sell the development rights, and would you accept the deed from them to so it could become town owned? Right. And then everybody in the town. I think it'd be nice uh, to have a real estate opinion on that, you know, before okay. if there's any liabilities, you know. I can do that. Sometimes there's free land and sometimes it comes with <laughs> issues. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I like the idea if there's no encumbrances or any issues legally. You know, puts us at liability at risk. It sounds good. Like I said, it's not happening tonight. Right. And, uh, when I talked to Penny and Craig uh, last week, she said it might even be next year. Right. But uh, you guys can be thinking about it. And yeah. We won't see that answer tonight. But right. On the road, we'll see, yeah. we'll see access to that land. We'll we're going to lay off from Rob. Does it, come, does it come down the roof? There there's is a, an access it is. there that shows on the tax map of a right of way up in there. Uh, there's a cut in right there. Is it a right of way or does there's a land go all the way to 15? I believe if you go up to the snack bar, there used to be a building there. It was a spring for the Bugs to be spring. Right. Right? Yeah, there was. Long time ago. Yeah. Boy, I'm old. I realize. I remember that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I used to hunt up there. Yep. yep. Thank you. <laughs> Judy, are you okay with that? Yes, I am. Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming in, Ron. Next, discuss and approve bids for the 2021 dump truck. I'm going to let Kevin talk about this a little bit. So. Go ahead. Well, so we've got a couple different bids here for an international and freight line. Yep. Um, truck wise, cabin chassis, they're basically about the same price. Uh, only difference between the two is the extended warranty from either dealer. One is about five grand more than the other, uh, just for the extended warranty. Which um, is higher. The international is higher. And I don't have an issue with going with Freightliner because that really makes no difference to me as far as the truck itself. And Freightliner makes a good truck. Too. A reliable, dependable unit. The service is the same through Travel Voice as it will be through Clarks. We have other freight miners in our lineup now. The warranty is possible. I can see in the office that will be worth the five thousand. Yeah, they are. I mean, it's what they send us, the paperwork goes to Apple Apples to apples? Pretty much apples to apples. What about body? Which body do you like, the, the Viking or Fairfield? I prefer the Viking body. Um, it's a little more yeah. than the uh, Fairfield body, but it's got a better lights on it. It's got the heated LEDs versus the regular LEDs, especially for the winter time. The regular LED will cover over the snow, or the heated will melt, melt it off. What do you think, Doug? Standing at the other shop, but I mean, Freightliner is a good unit. I mean, they already got one in there. I knew they out. did. Now, what's the chances of putting in them lights in the Fairfield's body? Well, they do it. It's just the price. It's but they're a lot cheaper right now, so. <coughs> right? Without the cost, yeah. 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 So, you guys want to make a motion on this? I make a motion that we award the bill to Charles. In the. Uh, on the truck. Come out. For uh will cost one hundred eighteen thousand six hundred and twenty four dollars. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. And the body? Is that a separate? 
Yep. Yes. We've done the board. Well, not what I've been saying a lot, but the board has done this before. Yes. The out of town contractors with a little bit more money. But I have talked to both Roland and Past and, and others, and the Viking body is, uh, is definitely a more durable, longer lasting. Yes. I remember Roland telling us that a couple years ago. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we go with Viking as a vendor on the body for $66,500. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Is there any further discussion? So, finance for five years. But the finance is already taken care of. You took care of that. Okay. So yeah. that's the now. Go ahead. That's right, Tina. The, the, the financing has already been done on that, right? This is no, just. No, this is the brand new truck. This is the brand new one. We're just. Uh, <laughs> you're thinking about, yeah, you know, this is brand new. We haven't voted on any of this. No, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. No. No, yeah. This is 2021, right? Right. What do you say, Brian? Well, I'm just, you know, I like to do business in town if we can. Yeah. And that's not, you know, it's, he's the cheapest. And I just can't imagine that the difference in lights, but if you think the body's a lot better too. The body's a lot better. There's not just lights, it's a chain. Yeah. The way the chain's set up. Um, it's a thicker gauge too, isn't it? I think that's rolling it said. Do you know that, Doug? I'm all MG. That's the way I am at Fairfield. I've had two in the village, and I like them. And our third truck is an MG on that one also. Which is Fairfield. The Fairfield. Fairfield local, yeah. So. What's your pleasure? I have a motion and a second, right? That's right. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Terry? No. And I'm also no. So could motion failed. Could you back up and just for since Judy's on the phone, do that by roll call? Well, what do you mean? We got so Judy. you have to go by name. Yeah. Eric? Yes. Judy? Yes. Gary? No. Brian? No. And I'm no. Three, two. Motion fail. So do I have another motion? I make a motion that we award the contract to Fairfield for the amount of $62,250. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Do you need the voice? No, any oh. motion, since okay. Judy's on the phone, any right. any motion that's not unanimous that's to be needs, roll call. has to be done by roll call. That's the reason why I asked for roll call. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> All right. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Yeah, thanks. Next, discuss and approve the bid for the tool cat. We won't let Brian fit on this one. Oh, I'm all for that. Okay. That's a good deal. I'd like to buy two of these instead of that other. I know. Go ahead, I Kevin. Guess. What can you tell us about it? This is actually, this is, this is Doug. Doug. Oh, Doug, sorry. Well, it's 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 in Middlebury right now. They've got one. Uh, it's got the five-year uh, warranty or 3,000 hours. Uh, Dan has the paperwork. On yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got a copy of it. Yeah. Um, we have it. Um, they're basically the same as what they have been, except they've got a different motor and diesel mm -hmm. uh, with the cool. And we have all the attachments for it right now. Right. So it's just a bare machine. Um, now, are we trading it one in? Yes. The old tool cat. We're getting 7000 for the old one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What well, year was that one? Uh, 2009 eight. or something? Yeah. It was. I'm not sure if that, I think that is a 12. I think that came when the town truck came in the village. Yeah, I remember when it came in. I'm surprised because I remember that being 47,500. So it hasn't gone up that much. No. No. Surprising. We really deal a lot with it, you know, so in, to a certain point, to, so. Well, you have all the attachments now, so it makes sense. Everything, sweeper, 
See, this is what makes me happy because this price here, you can buy two of those other things. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. Two of these. The holders, yeah. Yeah. yeah the only problem with this is this is not going to fit where the holder does. But our plans are to run this out on this other side of the panel over yeah. here for two machines in the wintertime yeah. versus just one. We've got 14 miles of sidewalk for that holder to to be taken so right that's a lot yes it is are some of those pinch points because there's a utility pole right there um, in the sidewalk yes there's there's poles down the wall down there by thompson's it's just too places. wide yeah it's just a little bigger yeah yeah um, okay do i hear a motion regarding it a motion that we approve as a sole source uh lender all right so vendor the champlain valley equipment the purchase of the project at uh, the price of forty nine thousand seven hundred forty five dollars. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Just to have an offer for the motion to also include that it's coming out of the equipment reserve fund. Yes. Yes, yeah, that's what I want. Well, and that's what my second. That was part of your motion. It was. Okay. <laughs> any further discussion? <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, approve Vermont peanut butter equipment sale. Go ahead, Dan. There's just two plastic carts that they want to buy from the old Vermont peanut butter stuff. And it's $50 a piece, so. Yep. $50 a piece? $50 a piece. How much is left over there? $50 for both. Yeah, oh, it says okay, both. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I, I read that okay. one when I was reading it. No, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It's I would just, think it could be fifty a piece. I looked them up, and they're a hundred bucks a piece to buy them. Yeah. Yeah. No. That we're glad you get rid of them. Too. That's with these. Oh, these ones here. Yeah. Oh yeah, we have those at concept too. Maybe we see. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. They are expensive. Yeah. <clears throat> so, what do you guys feel? Do you want to? Make a motion, or do you want to go back to them first? And if you saying fifty more, for both, fifty. However you want. Twenty-five a piece. Oh God, I want to talk about this some other night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I make a motion to prove the sale for fifty bucks and rather buy some cart. I'll second it. We're gonna have come back. Counterbid on a fifty dollar. Right, <laughs> on the cart. <laughs> Gary's right though. They do cost you more than that. Yeah. Well, I'm sure a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, you're know. right. You're right. Yeah. It'd be nice to sell all this. How much? How yeah. much more well, equipment is there? There's a lot left, and, and yeah, I think just the MSI has actually been storing this stuff for us for a long time. Right. So, yeah. They, we they want to turn, get rid of it. Yeah, we want to get rid of it. They want to get rid of it. So they'd be accruing a lot more storage fees. If yeah. The, if he was charging. I'll have to give them an inventory. We've been. It's been going down, and more and more people find something that they want, and it, it's kind of out there for the local businesses they all know it's sitting out there if they see something they need and they go look at it and then they make us an offer yeah. so it's worked out good for some of the businesses too be nice to figure out have a list of what's left you know? I, I get something hey i have an inventory so i can just probably go back through and right. delete what we've already sold cross off yeah i've got to let that list do yeah. this, this same yeah Hey, you need a plastic plastic car. Car. Yeah. <laughs> this. There's not right. a lot of that stuff there. No. Uh -uh. No this same guy been buying all this stuff? No, there's been a couple oh, of different there's people. There's been two or three different people. They'll say, get the list and take it over and say, hey, you want the whole bunch? Take it all. <laughs> yeah. Do, okay, do I hear a motion regarding this? Yeah, I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Where are we selling it to? Who's the one I'm going to come on here now? Conrad. Conrad, okay. Yeah. Whoever Conrad is. Yeah. Conrad Harris. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Next, the board appointments. Road name. Road name. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, sorry. Yeah. Let's go back to that road naming. Gordon Lane, huh? 
Savannah, it says that she is the, the owner of the property. Yes. Is this a, a new way on the street? Yes, it is. is. Right. So just stop should have a site map and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's part, part, part of the addition. Yeah, it's the addition. Which is not really easy to tell either. Where is that, Gary? That's right. Uh, before you get to Georgia, this building across from Georgia, right? Yeah. You know, before that big dip in the house right there. Yeah. You're going to, uh, well, they're coming back before the board, but. Um, Oh, you knew? It put it it abuts he knew. Okay. It's right beside uh plane. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they're putting a nine unit apartment building out the back. Okay. Keeping the existing structures, I assume, for now and Okay. Yeah, you see that there was a 911 yeah. deck that could call the 911. Right. Um, here, where 911 went through it, embedded it for us. Well, the only access is going to be off from Jersey Heights? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So, it's currently the only one. Do I hear a motion about it? I'll make a motion we approve it. I have a motion, do I have a second? Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Okay, next, the COVID-19 response was another new topic. I know we talked about it, but Dan, but do you want to uh, yeah, go mean, over it, any of it? Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's been kind of an evolving thing. Um, from the discussion, just so everybody knows, last uh, last Friday I had a staff meeting. I invited Bob in as a member of the select board just to, so that if you guys had questions, you know, it was Bob to contact him. Didn't want to have a select board meeting, wanted to be able to have a, a good conversation with the staff. Um, I'm lucky enough that I'm still on the uh, Governor's Emergency Preparedness Committee, so I went to that meeting on um, Thursday, and I thought at that point in time I had good up-to-date information, and everything has changed literally since then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just really literally. Um, you know, there, at that point in time, they weren't closing schools. Of course, now schools are closed. Um, there wasn't crowd limitations per se. Now the CDC's crowd limitation today was 10 people, which we're over right now. Um, and they they really um, I put that thing up, you know, and then this whole discussion is really about flattening the curve, so to speak, and to limit the number of exposures. So Sarah and I and Todd and uh, the staff in general just had discussions around the day. There's a bunch of different things we want you to consider. Um, first off, um, you know, a lot of towns in the state of Vermont are really limiting the public's interaction inside the building right now. Um, I think over the years, you guys have been pretty generous and we have a great computer system that will allow almost anything to be done um, outside the building. They Remotely. can pay bills, they can research land records, they can look at the tax maps, they can do a lot of stuff, and not only that, but people can work remotely. Um, and so they can log in and we can get into all of our financial stuff from any computer as long as they can get to the web. So we're just trying to come up with some plans and consult, you know, consulting with you guys, um, because I know Eric has some concerns about ongoing public meetings, um, and you know the kind of the, the guidance right now is is not to have public meetings. Right. Uh, um, and I think there's also a concern too, at least from some of the things I've read online. If you are having these public meetings, and what if somebody can't attend because they're at high risk? you know, and how much really public access are you giving them? There's no, and I, I don't anticipate that there will be any relief from the legislature on the open meeting law. So it's, it's very, very clear. If I've got a quorum of people together, it's gotta be public. You can't exclude the public. Um, I, I think there's a lot of people that come into the clerk's office that are probably doing what I'd call non-essential work in the, in the clerk's office. 
And I, I think the overall, what we're seeing right now is a big push by local governments, any organization for that matter is, is to limit the ability of people to congregate in one area. Um, there's also uh, a piece I want to talk about, and that's taking care of the employees. Um, should they get sick, you know, we don't want them here. They don't want to be here. And we want to make sure that they can self quarantine and not lose pay. We're lucky once again, that we have good personnel policies that allow people to accrue plenty of time to do it if they need to take time off. Um, I mean, right now we only have six people, um, town wide that if they needed to take two weeks off or 80 hours off, um, they would just go in the hole a little bit. And I'm still waiting for the federal legislation to come out to see how that really matches up to that. Right. Um, but I think we're covered since we already have it, but I would like for those people, you know, by select board policy to be able to go in the hole a little bit, to be able to make it up. These are all long-term employees that are not going anywhere. You know, just with the agreement, if something did happen, you know, that they would let us take it out of their last check. Um, there's also going to be an ongoing thing that could impact the employees if, you know, is if they can't take care of their kids. Now there's the fa paid family leave act that just came out of Congress. It's not through the Senate yet, which will guarantee them 12 weeks that's of paid family leave. I think at the 66% level. Yeah. So all these things are evolving on us daily. And I think the things that I need you guys to consider is what are we going to do in this building? Are, are we going to close access? Um, are you going to limit your select board meetings and the other um, commission's meetings? Are we going to allow groups that have scheduled meetings in this building to continue to have them? Um, how do you want to proceed on some of this stuff? Um, Sarah and I have talked at length today um, you know, about that. I think she wants to at least limit the ability of people to come in there to, to if it's not essential, you don't need to be here kind of thing. I think it's it's just kind of common sense at this point in time. We really want to encourage people to do whatever you can by mail, by internet, um, you know, by phone call, because we do have the ability to do all of that. Um, we want to be able to say if, if things go further, and since there is discussion right now of a national lockdown, to be able to make sure that I have the ability to be able to take care of employees and give them direction. Um, we've got EMS that's trying to staff up for, you know, the potential for being able to staff two ambulances during peak times. You know, we've got fire that's going to have to help them at some point in time. And we've got PD that's going to be out there on the front lines of anything that goes along the town. So I, I don't see a lot of gain, quite honestly, like some communities are doing or they may have some provisions in their charter or whatever to declare an emergency. But by the same token, um, we need to be able to think about how we're going to do these things. Because once again, from what I was told from, you know, and this was the agency heads, you know, last Thursday is completely different than the direction that we're going today. So it's evolving and I don't want to get behind the curve and I want to be able to take care of both the public and the employees. I think the commitment that we can make is, you know, we're going to be here. Uh, we have a, one of the things where we've got a very, very experienced staff. Um, we were able to communicate and, and work things out and come up with good recommendations, both for the public and for the select board. But I need to hear from you guys on what some of your policies and what you're thinking on this so that we can have that good discussion just like we've had. Yeah, it'd be nice to know what the state wants us to do. You know? Well, the state's asking everybody that could work remotely, work remotely. They've, you know, they're they're cutting down public access at DMV. You know, they've extended all those things. Um, you know, so they're really, they don't want anybody, you know, going to offices anymore. Right. Um, like once again, I think right now the governor's guidance today, and I think once again it'll probably change again. Was um, no groups larger than fifty. Um, and unless you're in a room like this where the, the capacity is 50, which means the, the capacity would be, the group would be 25 because he only wants it a half capacity so that you can keep the social distancing. Obviously, right now we're not doing any of that social distancing thing um, with the exception, you know, that we, provisions that we made for Eric. It's the same thing for any meeting that would happen in here. You know, you're really going to have to limit to, to stay within those guidelines. Um, to be able to do those things. 
What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, Eric? Dan, Dan presented this to me earlier today, so I've had the advantage of listening to this throughout the day. Uh, just one one question about uh, phone lines, telephone. Would we, if we were to go to a remote, um, you know, working from home, would there still be a staff member here <coughs> behind closed doors to do the, to be the, <coughs> the telephone operator? I mean, the, the, the phone call type of thing. Then how would we work? Does that mean Sarah's going to be in the office every day behind closed doors? Because, or are they, or are they call? Are they going to give them a phone number? With Sarah's personal cell number at home. I don't see. I don't know how that piece is. There's going logistics work. to figure out. There are logistics to figure out. As far as limiting traffic into the town offices, I think that's going forward. It's going to be a, a public acceptance. I don't think anybody's going to object to that. We just need to figure out how the logistics, how that's going to look. Whether we leave a person here. Or not, I'm going to leave that planning and stuff up to you guys, in my opinion. Um, and then allowing staff to go in the home on their sick leave. Dan explained to me there's very few, a low percentage of our staff that are even in a position to have to do that. Um, most of them have enough sick leave that if they needed to be home, uh, it would be covered. You know, they forced, forced me home. Um, I'm going to throw out a suggestion that at some point, if Dan feels that need, I trust Dan well enough to know that he's he's not gonna make that decision lightly, that he could do it through a, tele a telephone approval process to each of the board members rather than calling a special meeting, that he could pull us and say, this is what I'm looking to do. I, I don't know if we can do that. I think you know that you really can't make that decision very email. Um, I think you're you know, I'm I'm gonna you hate to say that you're gonna have to trust me a little bit, this is is kind of what I'm saying. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, like today, it all evolved on me. You know, it, it really it, it changed in a matter of hours on what the what the recommendations were being. My my take on it is, and you know, if, unless I'm quarantining myself, I'm, I plan to be here. You know, um, I don't think there's any reason for us not to. I think you know the highway crew um, is the same thing. They're not necessarily interacting with the public. Um, you know, I, I don't. If they want to take time off, they all have the ability to do that. They feel that they need to do that. And then we're just going to have to follow the legislative stuff and see what that does for us. Because there, there may be some requirements. If we have an employee that has a child that they can't take care of, it's going to be paid family leave. We're, we're not going to have a requirement on that. And then we'll, we'll, we'll institute that. Well, what um, are, we, are we looking at eight weeks? I mean, everyone keeps saying eight weeks is a window of time. Dan and I had a conversation Friday. Dan and I had a conversation in Conversation one, one idea. Conversation two, eight o'clock this morning, one idea. I think we had a new conversation at 10. About noon, our conversation changed. I left at 3.30 to drop my car off. And then Trump has come out with a new right. a new thing that Dan and I haven't even discussed. It, it changed. I saw that. Yeah, it's, 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 it's evolving. Changing. It, it's evolving all the time. And I think two months is right now, from what I'm reading, is probably a reasonable time frame. Well, why I'm asking is, can we identify the things, the different groups who have a meeting, to not have a meeting for eight weeks? Or, you know, yes. and, and do, we have a meeting every other week, so we'd be missing four meetings, or you know, whatever. And, and, and yes, we we have. I've talked with Todd to, to cover the DRB and, and the, the planning commission. You know, I'm looking at essential services. You know, there, there's still going to be people that maybe they're doing property transfers or whatever. They're going to have to do title research. Right. So those essential services cannot stop. You know, we're going to have to do payroll. We're still going to have to pay the bills. You know, so there's things like the select board could designate someone tonight to be able to sign the warrant for us. Right. Yeah. Um, the, um, the only two meetings, and I talked to Todd, there's a DRB meeting that you have coming up that's already been continued. Right. And, and that one needs to happen. There is a planning council meeting where it's a hearing for the zoning changes that needs to happen. Everything else. The village can, meeting. The village meeting, happen. yeah. And, and, but once again, that's really flying in the face of everything that they're telling us to do to have that meeting. Kind of not our decision. Um, we looked at the meeting room schedule. There's a meeting scheduled in here tomorrow morning of, of a small group. You know, I think it's safe to say we're not going to tell somebody at the last minute. But I think anything beyond that, we should stop. We should stop. Yeah. Um, and I think you know, we once again, we email, phone calls. I still look at us unless we are 
okay, an individual is quarantined, we will be here working. I, I think we have to be, you know, I, I think there's, there was a ton of phone calls today, there's a ton of emails, there's still information that, that I need to get out to people, not just you, but the staff, and we need to have that face-to-face -face coordination. I, I think I'm looking a little bit longer and, and seeing if it evolves, all right, so what if it does become a, a lockdown situation? And quite honestly, you know, where we're telling people, well, maybe you can't come to work, you're non-essential now. You know, and that's a, that's a different thing. You know, it's like, no, you can't come in, you're not essential. Um, yeah, I don't want you to come into work. You know, are we still gonna pay them? Are we gonna, you know, that kind of stuff, kind of thing. You know, because that's a little bit different where they have to be quarantined. You know, I think Sarah you know, said, well, we could rotate people in an alley office and, and still keep it our covered. Our doors are closed and we're not waiting, waiting on our staff. We don't need all three of us here 40 yeah. hours a week. But how does that work? Are we forcing people to use vacation time? Are we telling them they can't come to work? I don't know how to. Or set them up to work remotely. Well, some of them. There's not enough. I mean, there's projects that could be done, but more me as managerial than my assistants, whose main um, daily function is dealing with the mail and, and the, dealing the public. phones and dealing with the public. If, you know, the mail can be dealt with, but um, daily and process those payments, but it's not eight hours of work for three people. Mm -hmm. What do you think? take away the waiting on the public. Do you think this is something we could solve tonight? Or is it something we may have to get together? That's what I was thinking too, Judy. And I think there's more guidance coming down from the state and federal government as well. There are, uh, there are money packages being approved at federal and state levels. I think that uh, the very, we're not the only ones dealing with how, how we're going to pay. We, everybody is. You know, how do we do this? I think everybody's dealing with the same thing. So I don't think we have enough information to Judy's point, to make a decision on this tonight. I think it's great that we brought it up to talk about it so we're within our minds, but I think we still have to wait on, on our state and federal government partners. I think it'd be, it's, it's prudent to, to maybe look at stopping any non-essential meetings after this one tomorrow. You know, things like that that don't really need to happen or could wait. You know, I mean, I'd like to try to follow the guidelines as best as we can until we have a plan. It'd be nice to have some sort of a house cleaning meetings in each area like DRB, have a meeting, get this stuff done so you can have a two month pause or whatever, you know, only do the ones that are absolutely necessary. Right, and that's what Todd and I have already talked about. Yeah. You know, we talked about the planning council because it is the zoning changes, is that really necessary? And, and I agree with Todd, it is, you know, so we don't stall that. It's already been warned, it's a 30 day notice type of thing. It's a public hearing. We want. We don't want to lose that momentum. It's on there. You know, there's some of the other ones. The conservation commission. Right. You know, Parks I appreciate and Rec. Park and Rec. Parks and Rec. Cemetery. You know, but even like Moco comes and uses it here. And, um, other it's it's a very popular meeting room, and and you know, and once again, I think you know, following the guidance, you know, we we really should be limiting that. Yeah. Um, well, I want to say the same thing Eric does. I trust Dan to, to make a lot of them decisions. Yeah. Um, and, and probably what I will do in this particular case is I, I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking of doing. And if you've got concerns, write me back. And then if I need to throw out an emergency meeting, I can do that. Right. But, you know, and we can arrange it just like we have for, for Judy tonight for you to call in. Um, sure. or, or But once again, you know, there's at that point in time, we're opening up the building again. So I, I'm my only concern is this it's evolving so fast and going in so many different directions if we make a decision it's going to change anyway exactly yeah. so i you know i think you know i appreciate it because i think one of my big concerns if somebody has to quarantine i want to be able to make sure that they can do that and and not have to worry um and, and yeah. they're, they're gonna have, they could have family members to take care of i think that piece is already covered um by federal legislation it's the how far into that do we go? And I don't know if they're really going to do a, a lockdown or not, but I, you know, there's discussion. So I, I think it has to be out there that you guys know that it's a very real possibility. And then it's who's not essential staff that we're going to tell to stay home and work remotely. Mm -hmm. and, and, and luckily we, we can be able to do that. So, um, 
So, and, and, you know, and I don't want anybody to miss a house closing or, or anything along those lines. You know, that's not what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is <clears throat> just follow those guidelines and limit social contact to a certain degree. Yeah, and we can do it as a, as a board too. I mean, you can take a look at the, the meetings we have coming up and what's really necessary. Like, like you said, we can appoint you to sign the warrants for us and that maybe have a, one out of three of, meetings. Yeah, there has to be a member of the board to sign warrants. Yeah, well, whoever, yeah, you can, yeah. we can yeah. set somebody up to do that. Yep. Yeah. And then, um, you know, we can condense, at least condense the meetings down to maybe one a month or something, you know. I know you're gonna ha have to meet at once in April for liquor licenses. I, I emailed everybody, I sent letters, and I made phone calls today and said, this is the last meeting before that okay. your deadline to shut down yeah. and uh they know yeah. you know and it, it can be just as few as, as one member of the board and everybody else can call in yeah it's but you know right. as long as would we still have jim there videotaping that's <laughs> that's going to be up to them i mean you know it's, yeah. it's up to them and what their policies are going to be for their employees right all right i just the only reason i ask is because it's a great um for the public because they have then they have access to the meetings if they're not there. It'd just be an empty room. <laughs> well, and that to Judy's point too, that this is an important part of our meetings because it is. a lot of people do watch this. They do. Uh, they don't have time to come here or anything or whatever. But uh, I asked one of my concerns to the end was how is this going to impact our active fifty permit process for the gravel pit? And yeah, for the culvert project on Mud City Loop. Um, and he's told me that at this point, everything moving forward, um, if any of these scenarios that we talked about tonight presented themselves, the process still continues for those pieces, except for the Act 250, hearings. the, the hearing, the Act 250 hearing. Are out of our control. That yeah. Means, those may get delayed, but as far as uh, the engineering is, is, yep. is working on the, the culvert and you know that whole permit thing is, is going so yeah. Um, yeah on the culvert the survey work is all done um and they're, they're doing a hydraulic study so they can size the, the box culvert and then it'll go to the state for permitting so those things can go on in regards the, the act 250 permit you know since that's the next step is the hearing on site i'm not seeing the state have an on-site hearings for a while you know, and I don't, I don't know if there's anything we can do about that. Right. Probably not. The other piece I wanted you to consider is um, the dog licenses. So it says in state statute that the deadline is a April 1st, and that if you fail to meet that deadline, then there's a 50% um, late fee penalty assessed to it. So um, I have an <laughs> email from BLCT because all the towns are um, trying to scramble and figure out what to do uh, because a lot of the Mets are uh, closing. They're canceling the rabies clinics. Um, I got a phone call from a local vet. They say people are scrambling in to get rabies, um, their dogs rabies updated and they would really appreciate an extension. So VLCT is feeling that even how the law is written, um, the state would still get paid their portion on April 1st. That never changes. Who collects the late fee is the town. Right. And so they think that if the town wanted to, that they could um, waive the, the, the late, late fee, fee or extend it because that's town money, it's not state money. Right. The deadline would still be April 1st. It would just be um, the late fee. I know that um, the governor today is extending um, DMV renewals, mm -hmm. car registrations, uh, licenses by 90 days, and they have messages that they're encouraging everybody to do it online or in the mail versus bringing in their paperwork into the office. So it's another piece to consider. Is this the vehicle inspections were 90 days? I didn't hear the registrations and whatnot, but all that too long. Yeah, that's, I heard that. It changes every hour. Yeah. That was probably one thirty two this afternoon. Yeah. It, it's literally. It. I'm like trying to write up a blurb, like guessing what, if anything, you'll make a decision to like send out, and I just 
it, it changes so quickly I can't keep up with it. And I would say the only thing you can do is don't send that out till the end of the day. Okay. And you start first the next day. So I think this is going to be sort of a to be continued thing. We'll get it is. More I think there's there's a couple of things I want at least select board concurrence on tonight. Um, the first would be um, we're going to cancel all non-essential public meetings, and right now the the two essential public meetings that are coming up um, will be the DRB and the Planning Council, and I'll work with you, Bob, on on scheduling something um, for the select board as we see things happen or whatever. Yeah. You know. Um, and ask the select board to appoint somebody to sign warrants for finance okay. and um, just a, a change to the policy that will, would allow um, people to go into um, the hole, so to speak, on their ETO. Yeah. And the other one would be to extend the deadline for dog licenses to June 30th. Not extend the deadline. Without penalty, be no penalty. April 1st, but. Um, the, the penalty, I no. Just raise the fee. Wait, wait, wait. The late fees. Okay, why don't we have separate motions for that? Yeah, just it, is did you get all that right? Sure. And I would also <laughs> add the village meeting. And it's been warned. It's mind. been warned for here. Those. And that's the problem, you know. So the, the village meeting is already warned, and it's warned for this location. Right. right. And that's where it's the, it's, it's something's going to happen to the legislature that says that they can do something different. That's a big one for Dave because there's a lot of villages that still have their meetings coming up. So, you know, they're, they're, there's just tons of them that they don't do their, their meeting on the same day as town meeting. Okay. So, you want me to go through one at a time? Yeah. Um, um, to make a motion that we suspend all non essential meetings uh, for 60 days or until it's put, like, put a different date on it. Till uh, May 31st. Do I have a second? Second. Any Is further discussion? Is that good enough, Dan? Yes. I wonder if we could also maybe amend it to say, or until um, if 60 days is too long, the governor says it's okay to go back to our regular schedule before 60 days. I think if that happens, and what I could do is, is then I can come back, come back and schedule a you know, meeting and let you guys okay. amend that. Sounds good. And I think we'll, we'll do that first. Yeah. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. I make a motion that we allow our current staff members to go in a negative balance on their ETO if the uh, need should arise. Do, do I have a second? Yeah, the only thing I would, want to, would like to add is it, with the agreement that in any yeah. negative balance, should they terminate employment, would they be taken out of their, their last check. Do I have second. a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Should that say aye. due to due to the quarantine? Due to the coronavirus? The yeah, he said that. Yeah, that's what my intent was. Okay. So I thought I understood. Yeah. Okay. Motion is passed. What's the next one? To um, limit um, business within the town offices to essential business only. So moved. Oh, you got to make the motion. May thirty first. So the thirty first of May. <laughs> Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. And the last one. Two more. Appoint somebody to sign warrants. Oh, yeah. Can we appoint two people? Yes. So in case one isn't here, maybe you're not. Yeah, order. either just make it either or. Make a motion with the chair or the vice chair be allowed to sign the warrants for the rest of the board until May 31st. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Wait, wait, fees for motion is yeah. passed. Dog, the dog fees, if you could make a motion to waive um, late fees on dog licenses, and why don't we go to May 31st if that's our date? Was that your motion, Eric? That would be Brian's motion. He's the dog guy. That's Brian's motion. <laughs> okay, well, I just was going to have some discussion, but okay, I'll make a motion that we do waive them. 
Do I have a second? Second. It's only have to be first, right? Yep. Any further discussion? Yes, and that's late fees, but how about fines? Fines, um, like if they're not registered at all, the $100 one? No, I don't, I wouldn't win. So if you don't register your dog by April 1st, because you can't because it's not, you couldn't get a rabies shot. Technically, it's a hundred dollar fine per day. Okay. We're not waving that far. You're kidding. <laughs> it's your motion. I, you're the dog catcher. What do you What do you suggest? Wouldn't that be officer discretion? We can't override state law, which is the April first deadline for registering the dogs. So but what if you you can't do it? I mean, in other words, we're we're waving the late fee because you can't do it. So all of a sudden, I mean, somebody's planning on doing their dog register. And they can't. And they can't, that's all. I mean, we can wait that, that could add up to a big so, fine. Of <clears throat> so if they were to come in here to register, pay the registration fees by the deadline, they don't have a rabies certificate such that they have to get that as soon as it's available, then come back in, and they, then they get, I mean, I know that makes another step to it, but we're trying to circumvent state law here. I don't want to get us in trouble. So. <laughs> you lost me. I don't yeah. think you can register them without a rabies. You can't. No, you can't register them without. Yeah. And people try. They're like, well, just hold my money until I get the rabies certificate. No. So no was... rabies certificate, you can't register. So... I mean, if we really want to discuss it, it could be more complicated. We could only waive it to somebody whose rabies expired. Right. That's what I was and thinking. Make everybody who has a valid one still. Oh, that's what you're saying. That's... That takes um, the pressure off the vets, does yeah. not take the pressure off my office right. because there's still two weeks for them to come. The, yes. This is a high traffic two weeks for my office Yeah. because people come in to register. What's the net part of your motion? Sure. But I think but I understand, but maybe. But I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm putting it for discussion. I don't yeah. know which scenarios. So you're saying, just let me make sure I understand. You're saying that if you you just don't come in and you're late, you still can get a fine. But if you can't make it because you can't do this because of what's happening, then you, both are waived to you. I'm saying there's are two options. Right. I don't know which I recommend. What do we think? Okay, but there was two options, yeah. Think. One requires me to, or my staff to, really see when when was your rabies expired. Right. The other one's just... I'll tell you a good example. The three dogs in my family right now, two of them have got to have shots, and we are hip was headed to get the rabies shot. One of them's all set, so we register the one that's set, but we can't, the other one. Mm -hmm. And it's not, I guess technically, it's not our fault. Or and you know, as a dog one, catcher... Okay, not only the dog catcher can't do it, which is not a good thing in town. <laughs> <laughs> Chief. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Okay. Yeah. Ours was scheduled with Thursday. Yeah. Ours was scheduled with Thursday. So, with what? You tried to fight it with the push. With somebody coming in to say, well, I can't really register my dog because I didn't get the rabies shot because it got canceled. You're putting more foot traffic in this building. Or certainly phone calls. I think the the simplest thing, it might not be the fairest, but the simplest is just to have it all through <clears throat> May 31st. I say the deadline's April 1st. Encourage people to do the correct thing and if their dogs are have their shots mailed in um, yeah. they can call me with their card i can do it by the phone they can use the drop box okay do you want to amend the motion or do you know what because we have a motion on the floor rescind your motion to start again yeah. okay well yeah or i just would amend it either way whichever is yep. easier i can amend it i'll just amend it to not just the late fee, but the uh, fines until May 1st. May 20, 31st. May 31st. May 31st. And we had a second on that. Mm -hmm. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Did you say aye. the amendment, say what we're voting on again? 
<laughs> We're voting on not to only waive the um, lay fee, fee, but also any fines that might be because the dog wasn't registered as April 1st. Okay, thank you. Thanks. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. That was painful. This was our day. Yeah. And I can't imagine the governor or the president or any of the other leaders that right. much bigger things to deal with than dollars. We're talking two dollars. Right. We're not talking big money. Big money. So is there any other conversation about COVID nineteen? Bill, do you want to say anything? You've been quiet back there. Uh, just you, you know we Fortunately, got ahead of this a couple of months ago. Uh, Corey and I started looking at uh, the patterns coming out of the Asian continent and some of my social media contacts. Uh, so we actually started gearing up two months ago. Um, laid in a good supply of the N95 masks. We pushed out training to our people back in February along with N95 fit testing. Uh, so we're good to go on that uh, on that aspect. Um, We've got, uh, we uh, went into the mass casualty trailer. There were uh, uh, PPE backup equipment in the mass casualty trailer. We've brought that in to, uh, to make it part of our primary stock. Uh, right now I estimate we've probably got enough to do about 20 to 24 patients um, uh, that we would need full PPE for. Uh, anticipating, uh, anticipating a COVID-19 load over the next two or three weeks, we've already made a uh, We've already made application to the Department of Health uh, to get into the national strategic stockpile uh, to uh, get more PPE on board. Uh, we're recognizing the fact that we've got the largest skilled nursing facility in the county in our in our town, along with our other properties that we have to be concerned with. Um, uh, Dan and I have been talking frequently, uh, both telephonically and face to face, about this as it develops. Uh, we uh, we took a proposal to Dan this morning. Uh, for upstaffing uh, with a second ambulance 12 hours a day. As this progresses, uh, that ambulance would be uh, completely staffed by uh, our own call volunteer staff. Um, so uh, we've got that in the loop and we'll look at start filling that out in a month, uh, a month going ahead. Uh, things like CPR classes, uh, American Heart Association came out this past weekend with a recommendation to push those out to at least 60 days and anybody who uh, Anybody with a certification card that expires within that 60 days uh, will still be considered certified. Uh, so this week we had uh, we had CPR with our fire service colleagues and also with our police colleagues, and we've pushed those out uh, probably until June uh, with dates to be determined. Um, other than that, I think uh, I think we're set. It's uh, uh, 40 years in EMS. This is kind of uh, kind of uh, HIV meeting 911 is what it looks like. Um, if you look at the numbers of where we are in the United States, our numbers are identical to the Italian numbers and we're 12 days behind them. Uh, that's a scary proposition. Yeah, it is. Um, and I'm, I'm not an alarmist kind of guy, but uh, there's, there's some concern there about where the numbers will go. Yeah and how it will impact our agency and how it will impact uh, a small critical care, critical access hospital. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Bill. Sure. Any comments on you, Richard, or you, Denny? About We're just basically going to follow the rescue's lead, but mainly I was just trying to keep everybody briefed on the latest push down days and notifications and notifications from the state. Uh, I do have two miles sick right now, but not related to that all the way. So, right. But yeah, no, we're, uh, we're ready to wait. How are you handling um, calls? Are you, are you... Calls haven't changed that much yet. You know, we're still getting our, you know, the, the usual mental illness, that type of thing. So, right. You know, they have other issues at this point, so. Right. We don't find any suspicious. Okay. Calls like that yet. So. How about you, Danny? 
Any comments? Well, they keep them. We updated, I update the floor. We, the last thing we got from the state, uh, Vermont Fire Academy, I printed off. Everybody got a copy. Uh, Bill's already offered if we need masks, but with our stuff, our SCBA, PPE. Just walk around with Scott packs on all over the place? Yeah. Pretty it's much. actually safer than that. <laughs> yeah, I bet it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. my, my, only concern, my only concern there, and that's certainly part of our contingency, is having firefighters and turnouts with, with SCBAs. Uh, clearly, the turnouts would have to go in the extractor to be cleaned afterwards, uh, but the SCBAs would uh, probably require a pretty extensive breakdown uh, to yeah. decontaminate them. If we do that after structures, yes, sir. we're used to that. And we have a bunch of the wipes on the trucks, the hand sanitizers. We've had that right along because to us it's a little more advanced than the cancer. So a lot of the stuff we've been taking precautions over time on the cancer that firefighters have been getting and dying from yeah. is all the law in line in what this outbreak not everything but it helps us already because yeah. a lot of the habits like with the extractor purchasing that with the dryer you know having the bags if that happens the person pretty much is not getting in the truck with the ppe it's no different than our bloodborne <clears throat> You know, when we go to a 1050 and you have a spot of blood on your gear, your gear comes off and goes in the red bag, gets back to the station and gets extracted. You know, so we got to wait and see. I mean, luckily with EMS, if they can crew that second ambulance, that will cut down on our exposure. Okay. Because we are primary if their rig is out and it's somebody down unresponsive and it's not an arsenal. I, I wouldn't know. So. I'd just like to add too that uh, you, some of you get the monthly data runs that I do. We did 74 calls in February. Uh, we're up to 54 calls 15 days into March. Wow. So we're looking at 100 call a month here if, uh, if we extrapolate that data forward. Mm -hmm. um, and and we haven't even had we haven't even had a spike from COVID yet. That's just what we what we've seen a spike in is respiratory illness and flu, our typical kind of late uh, late winter spike that we would see with flu season, um, and uh, they're kind of kind of coinciding here at the same time. Oh, well, thanks for everybody what they're doing and gonna just keep on, keep on it. You know, the good thing is, is, you know, the state of Vermont has practiced this before and it worked with the state. Yeah. So they've, they've done pandemic exercises before. There is a good plan in place. So, I mean, they went through it not too long ago with SARS and then there was the H1N1. So there is a good plan. Um, there's no surge capability right now for, for Copley Hospital, but I'm pretty confident we could work with them and set up a surge if we needed to. Um, there's enough experience around to do that if we, if we ever get to that point. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. All right, we'll move into board appointments. First is Planning Commission, Josh Goldstein and Steve Foster, for your terms. I'll make a motion on appointment. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Number two. Development Review Board, Gary Nolan and Marianne Wilson, four year terms. Make a motion with point them. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Gary Nolan, Planning Council, as well as the Air. Uh, are you in the Planning Council? No, no, it's just the oh, Development Review Board. Oh. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. So pass. Next, Lamoille Regional Solid Waste Managed District Supervisor, Charles Cooley, two-year term. I'll make a motion to appoint him. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 
Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, Emergency Management Coordinator, Dan Lindley. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any, many opposed? Motion is passed. E911 Coordinator, Abby Patch. So moved. I have a mo aye. motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Animal Control Officer Brian Kellogg. So moved. Motion to have uh, nominate Brian Kellogg as Animal Control Officer. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Is he qualified? Does he want it? <laughs> How many years is it been? I don't know, 40 something. I don't know. <laughs> That's it? You're going to go for another 40? Oh, probably. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Poundkeeper, Brian Kellogg and Jeff Foss. I make the motion that we nominate Brian Kellogg and Jeff Foss for Poundkeeper. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. And a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Number eight, Green Update Coordinator, Conservation Commission, Ron Stancliffe. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, fence viewer, Dwayne Sprague. Did you want to? Make a motion we nominate Dwayne Sprague for fence viewer. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Whew. Okay, that's it. Next, old business. Do we have any old business? That's enough. Approve the warrants. I have a motion to approve the warrants. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. TA report. Just one other thing to add. I think you've all seen what we're working on. I want to appreciate everybody's help in getting through this because that's going to take us all to do it. So, so thank you, everybody. Second is um, we had our first meeting with FEMA today on uh, the October 31st storm. And I think they were already impressed with the amount of paperwork that Tina was able to lay on them. So, um, so I mean, she's well prepared. She's been through it before. So um, we're moving forward on that too. So hopefully we'll get through that. And we have another meeting Friday. So she mailed them about 300 pages worth of stuff for that. So. 35 PDFs. She won't ask again. <laughs> <laughs> so that's moving forward too. So and, and as you already heard, you know the the Act 250. I, I can't give you a time frame on when that will happen. Um, and we're still moving forward on the culvert replacement. So I, I, I don't see anything so far. Um, that will prevent us from putting that culvert in this summer. Sounds good. Hmm? Any questions for Dan? No, what, what culvert is that? It's one up on Lutz and Blue. Is that big multi oh, okay. That's yeah. going to have to be a box culvert. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Dan. Select board concerns. Gary. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Too new, new to have any concerns, I guess. That's a good thing. Judy. I'd just like to thank uh, Bill and his crew for being so prepared for this uh, coronavirus that's upon us now. And also, I want to extend my apologies for the way he was treated at the town meeting by some of our residents. They do good work, and uh, they shouldn't be questioned on how much money they're bringing into the town. I agree. Thank you. I agree. Thanks, Judy. Right. I uh, want to thank everybody for what you're doing. It's just quite a thing that's going on. Um, thank you guys for doing it, everybody. Um, did you find out anything about the groomer uh, as far as insurance for the groomer? That's being I've asked him to come in and see me, and I haven't seen him yet. And okay. As far as VLTT, you know, they're going to want something on the actual action of the grooming. You know, it's 
they're, he's doing work on town property. They're going to need to have some sort of, of liability insurance to do that. So I haven't seen him since then. No. You, Good thing you know what we're talking about, Gary? No. Uh, Hank uses a, it's a kind of a groomer, a small one track machine uh, to lay oh, down snow tracks. Dog. What's that? Snow oh, dog. Snow dog. Okay. okay. I, yeah. It, it's for grooming the gravel pit trails for all the bikes and everything, all the recreation. And, um, you know, we've basically said it's okay as long as he has insurance and he's got to obtain that insurance to cover him using that tool. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting for follow up with that. The good thing is I think most of the snow is going up in, yeah. in that area. Right. So. Yeah. I, I don't think he needs a groom right now. Yeah. Okay. okay. Eric. Uh, Eric, I'm like, sound us call with the town staff going forward. It's going to take flexibility. Uh, and I appreciate you guys staying on top of stuff for sure. Uh, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that we just have come through probably the worst part of our mud season. Our highway department worked simply ungodly hours dealing with frost coming out really fast in one day. Uh, and they did a great job as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we're on it in the total spot as quickly as they could, as efficiently as they could. Whether they did not cooperate with that whole process, but uh, I think our roads are in, in real good shape at this point. Uh, going forward, we'll look at the, the, the little bit of frost we got left to come out, but do so slowly the rain we get coming. Um, I would like to put out just a note of caution based on our social media policy. There has been a lot of social media posting. Of, I'm not even talking about our people. I'm talking about state agencies by employees of the state on their Facebook pages with doom and gloom. And I will tell you that it is quite likely some of them will lose their jobs. It is a time that nobody has ever experienced. We have no experience going into this. We're all hoping for the best and we're looking out for each other. We can do that by not posting stuff on social media about what your new requirements are at work. You know, well, this, this, now this is what I've got to deal with. Uh, you know, looking for that attention. Everybody's sacrificing. Everybody's going to hurt financially because of this. And it does not do us any good to go on social media and get people stirred up for no good reason. I encourage everyone to continue to watch the CDC's guidelines, the state of Vermont, uh, the governor's no daily addresses, watch for them on social media, and, and listen. And Dr. Levine from the Department of Health is putting out great information every day. And uh, that's where you should get your stuff from, not, not Facebook. And I just encourage our staff to be cautious about what they put on. Facebook pages. Thanks, Eric. I agree. I agree. Bill. Just, just to echo what Eric said, uh, the other thing that I'm seeing a lot of social media stuff on and I'm getting people stopping and asking about is, oh, I heard there was a positive patient at so-and-so. Uh, if it's not coming out of Mark Levine's mouth, uh, it doesn't exist. Uh, he's got the official totals. And if it's not getting released by him or from DOH in a press release, it doesn't exist. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. I got one thing I forgot. Too late. Because we, while we hear so much bad things about the Mud City Loop, I had a lady come in the other day when you guys were up there, truck after truck after truck, said she was really pleased and was doing a good job. So. Bob, I forgot to mention LCPC again. I was going to do that. <laughs> and, and one other thing is, Chef brought up about maybe uh, 211 getting overloaded, and I'm wondering if it's something that we should be discussing, not right now, but um, uh, in a community wide for supporting um, a, a 211 system. Yes, yeah, that sounds good. I just wanted to say, I wanted to welcome Gary to the board. Um, going to be nice working with you. And I also wanted to echo the, my other board members' comments, uh, thanking everybody. You know, we all got to stick together and do uh, do what we know we're supposed to do. And um, I want to thank Dave and Chap for coming in. And there's a lot of people that are willing to help out there. I know personally, my uh, the company I work for has also done things like closing the doors now, and we've we've got a 
third of the staff working remotely. We're looking at other options and, you know, all this is developing day by day. And uh, if we all just work together and uh, maybe not stick together, but we can stick together separately for now. But my, one of my big questions was, um, you know, when can we all get tested? I think, you know, being tested is a big thing, you know. I think they can't make the tests fast enough, but that's going to be one thing that, you know, will help us to assess the situation. I think, you know, 90% of the population hasn't been tested or more than that, you know, but that's a, you know, it's going to eventually Once happen. Once you find out what, how they test you, you might be less eager. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, that's true, Chef. But I appreciate everybody's uh, willingness to help out and let's see what happens going forward. All right. Is there any other business? Any other comments tonight? Do I hear a motion? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? So passed. Thanks a lot. <laughs>